it's been nine solid hours of lessons with just one short break for lunch. They can expect exactly the same over the next four days. Do you think he's a good teacher? Yeah. Oh, amazing. I think it's mm. great. Yeah, no books, no notes, it's different. nothing. It's different than it the English different than teachers than in this country, definitely. And it's better than a dictionary, actually. <laughs> it is, it is, because it's like, um, uh, something like, um, he explained something like, what was it? A verb, a yeah. verb, okay. A school we were taught a verb was a doing word, right? To him, it's not a doing word. <laughs> it's the word with a two. You know, it was, yeah, it's two, it's two, to have, you know, then you know that it's a verb after two. After the word to, so. You have to work to angst yeah. and leave to mm -hmm. I just kept on like thinking of words which I wasn't meant to, so I thought, of, nah, I better not think of it in case when it comes to Monday he's gonna know. Because he seems to can read people's minds. Like he's telepathic in some way. <laughs> he can read everyone's mind. He can. He can read everyone's mind. And then he starts saying things like, um, don't pick words from the way, you know, from from whatever, from the wave and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just tell yourself, no, he knows what I'm gonna say next, you know. <laughs> like when he talks to you and asks you a question, it's like it's looking into you and I don't know, no, he knows I... what you're thinking inside. It's, you know. It is almost technically impossible to lie to Michelle Thomas. He may not detect what the truth is, but he will know when he's not being given it. At in the morning. Michel Thomas learned his skills as a communicator during the Second World War, which was one of the most remarkable periods of his life. <laughs> he extracted a great deal of information from former SS and Wehrmacht officers and was responsible for securing some top secret German documents which were invaluable at the subsequent trials. Death sentences at Dachau, the Nazi killers of Mauthausen concentration camp. Has taken concurring, sentences you to death by hanging at such time and place as our authority may direct. Michel had first hand experience of fascism growing up in Germany and he escaped to France at the start of the war. He fought with the French resistance, but with the liberation of France in 1944, he joined the American Army Counterintelligence Corps. His knowledge of at least seven languages meant a move into interrogation. He became well known for his ability to extract information from the most difficult prisoners without resorting to violence. <laughs> In April 1945, he recorded his experience of liberating the concentration camp at Dachau. His job whilst there was to extract from the head of the crematorium exact details of the atrocities committed at the camp. What we fought against during World War II, the evils, we fought against, was defeated, at least temporarily defeated or militarily defeated, if not more than that. But we not only fought against something, against the evil, but we fought for dignity, for freedom, for, for freedom of all of it, meaning for a solid, healthy sense of democracy and free society. And I felt that that can only be achieved and maintained through a good, strong education, through a good, strong educational system. Because without it, one will always be uh, vulnerable to any attack, or to be swept away, like what happened 60 years ago, whatever. Within a few years of the end of the war, Thomas left for the United States and began a very successful career as a teacher to the stars. My place became a place for actors, actresses, producers, directors, writers, and, uh, who is who in Hollywood. Michel Thomas was a man who taught Grace Kelly French and the French director Francois Truffaut came to Hollywood to learn English. It costs £10,000 one-on-one, and movie stars were the guinea pigs for his techniques. 
He worked with Yves Montand on the set of Let's Make Love. Yves Montand had no uh, uh, background in uh, his own language in French because, uh, as he told me, he grew up in, uh, in the slums of uh, Marseille and had very uh, a poor educational background uh, and had no idea about uh, French grammar. Yes. And uh, he, all he was able to, uh, uh, he thought he knew what the present tense is and the future tense and the past tense, because he associated present with now, whatever happens now is in the present, and whatever happens tomorrow is the future, and whatever happened yesterday is the past. I couldn't get out of the simple tenses into other tenses, and the only way I was able to do it by associating each tense with a different motion, different movement. And now he could react in French and in English to those different movements. Yes. And this is uh, how he was able to uh, uh, learn how to use structure and tense and all the tenses in, in French and at the same time in English. Right, pask. Yes. So once more, because? Pask. Pask. Once more? Pask. Pask. Ce n'est pas, it is not. Pa, not. All those movements only happen in the beginning to lead them into it, and that all stops. Because it, it is important to be, uh, not to be dependent on movement or, de or dependent on any teacher. Combien de temps? Right, combien de temps? How long can you stay here? Com combien de, de, de temps? Yes, combien de temps? Can you? Pouvoir. Pou Pouvez. Mm -hmm. Pouvez voir. Can you? Pouvez vous. Right. Stay. Reste. Here. Ici. Right. Michelle went into this language drew out of it its essential components and their relationship to each other in some kind of way that allowed him to simplify the whole thing. And then an ability to put it back all together again in a way that allowed others to enter the language. I felt that if, if the structure of educational interaction between the teacher and the pupil was along the lines that Michel had, because he had really made what was a, a psychological breakthrough. He had made a breakthrough so you were unblocked and free to learn. And so uh, I felt sure one could, utilizing that kind of method, you, anything became more pleasurable to learn. The ones who should have gotten this are not the movie stars who are going to be on site in Paris or going down to Mexico for a couple of weeks. They're not the ones who should benefit from an instructional method of this, po of this degree of, of power. The young people should. Michel always felt that his approach was universal, that it could apply to more than just a wealthy elite. In the late 60s, just a few miles from Hollywood, this Los Angeles school put his method to the test. If I think of uh, a situation like in, in Watts, where I had uh, a high school, junior high school, with uh, young people who were kept in by police patrol and pa parent patrol, I wanted to demonstrate, to show, to show what can be done in teaching, even under the worst of circumstances, the worst conditions, and those were the worst conditions. In South Central Los Angeles, this school had become ungovernable. Michelle offered to come in and teach. Michael Fay, a former teacher at the school, has returned for the first time in almost 30 years. You know, Martin Luther King spoke here one time. Is that right? Yeah. As time went by and the conversations went on, I finally agreed to organize a class for Michelle, basically so we could prove him wrong. That is, 
okay, Michelle, we'll get you a class, you can do your thing, and you'll be sorry. He carried on for about four weeks, and then he uh, asked us to come in and listen to a demonstration, which we did. We had myself, the principal, and some other people come in. And sure enough, these children were somewhat proficient in the French language. They were speaking to each other in French. They understood what each other was saying. It was remarkable, absolutely remarkable. Uh, Michelle, you were right and I was wrong. You did a fine job. Thank you. Thomas spent the next few years trying to get approval for his method from various universities in the United States. They were always very impressed, but rarely gave him the credit he felt he deserved. During that time period, whenever I demonstrated successfully how one can learn a language in a matter of a few days, they always said that it, uh, it cannot be replicated and that it's, uh, that it's only a, a course that only can be done by Michelle Thomas, but this is a, a question of personality or charisma, or whatever they, they may have called it. Yes. But they said, this is unique and cannot be replicated, therefore it will not have a uh, permanent value. Michel is convinced his spectacular results will have a lasting value because of his methodology. The unique ways he feels he has found to break down the grammar and structure of a language so it is easily understood and learned. Right. Pouvez-vous me dire où c'est? Because I cannot find it. Um, Pasque. I cannot. Peux pas. Hmm? Pas trop? Je, je, je ne peux pas. Mm -hmm. Find it. Um, to find this. Tro, trouver. And, so I cannot find it. Trouver, c'est. Um, le trouver. What? An example he is prepared to share is the way he teaches pronouns, words that replace things with a name. Words like it, him, and me. Knowing them is fundamental to using a language properly, and being able to put them in the right part of a sentence usually means a student has done a great deal of hard work. It is something Michelle tackles after a few days. Right. To do in French is fair, yes. To remember fair, I will say, well, it's a fair thing to do, yes. It's very fair to do it. To make is very fair. Come. Venir. See it. La voir. With me. Avec moi. To do it, the fair. Yes. I don't see anything but uh, uh, that le means it, that, uh, in the, that the pronoun comes before the infinitive. Yes. Nothing. I just say fair to do, le fair to do it. That's, uh, that's all. Then immediately I will go into it and say, well, so how would you say, I would like to do it. You know, je voudrais, I would like. I would like to do it, je voudrais le faire. I would like to know at what time you're going to be here, because uh, I want to see you. Now, le faire is already something which is very natural, very uh, common to them, yes? So there was, they must know now the difference between to do fair and to do it, le faire. Now I start replacing the verb. To see? Voir. To voir. see. Right. Okay. So if, if to see is voir, and say, well, how would you say now? I would, uh, to see it. Some students will then, uh, most of them will immediately say, le voir, yes? Yes. And some, uh, some may not say immediately le voir. Then I will go back to what is to do, faire. And to do it, they will say le faire. Okay, now go to le voir, to see, to see it. Ah, le voir. Yes. They all get it. No, je. Le voir. So once more. Je I would like, voir. once more, I would je like to see it. Je voudrais le voir. Right, je voudrais le voir. Le voir, I 